thousands of melts the uranium. The radioactive fallout is going to be a hundred times greater than the combined power of the two atomic bombs dropped on you. And the damage which has been caused. We have now agreed with the Soviet authorities to come to Vienna. Продящих собак. Але е, я не рекомендую їх гладити, тобто не рекомендую гладити усіх, особливо тих, які проживають на КПП. Which is uh, which became actually the symbol of Chernobyl zone these days. Так фотографируют. Да. Там ну зачем выходить? Ну найди еще. Опа. До речи, дивиться. Я вам. Алле, вы ее не отримаете. І ось чому. Дивіться, жовті дозиметри, наприклад, які ви там брали в оренду, вони будуть нам показати. Радіолокаційні системи, які отримали назву дуга. Дуга, тому що форма радіосигналу має дугу форму. If you have some milk, you can give him because he knows all the commands. But without the milk, he won't do anything. Stavali, Nils. Jump, go play. Не, мы думали вы. Мы думали вы идете. Пока по Так, народ, дивіться, зараз е, от ми з вами пройшли перше головне КПП. Е, те, що я не сказав, дивіться, давайте так. А взагалі, дивіться, ми зараз з вами приїхали, е, як то колись називалося, до містечко Сателіта. От е, у нас є місто Чорнобиль, а це колись називалося Чорнобиль 2. Коли ви сюди приїжджаєте, оцей, так сказати, чекпоінт, він існував ще в тому році, коли це все побудували. Людина, яка сюди приїжджала, одразу потрапляла на головну вулицю, яка не мала назви, але розділяла це місце на дві частини. То, що було справа від нас, там знаходився, там знаходився, знаходився маленьке, маленьке місто які мали всього лише одну вулицю, на якій розташовано було 5 жилих будинків. Тут зліва у нас все розбито на частини. Дивіться, ми зараз з вами знаходимося на території військової частини, яка займалася охороною об'єкту. 
Ця будівля була казармами. За вашими спинами там знаходиться військовий командний пункт, а там знаходиться їдальня. Якщо просто покрутитися, то можна побачити тут багато різних плакатів, які були частиною місцевої пропаганди. До речі, тут маршрували солдати. Це місце мало декілька ліній оборони, то не дивуйтеся, коли буде бачити вишки та колючу проволоку. Тому що, наприклад, до дуги можна було підійти тільки, якщо у вас був спеціальний пропуск, який можна було дістати тільки з прямого розпорядження Міністерства оборони СССР. Не УССР, а саме СССР, тобто центрального. Пройшли, якщо бачили, механічні ворота і е, наразі потрапили до механізованої частини. Here we already crossed the border of the mechanical division. These guys uh, were learning here how to drive car and how to repair it. So the Soviet driver was a kind of a unique soldier. <laughs>
Не всі зрозуміли. Але дивіться, у нас є підрозділ, на жаль, державний, що саме цікаве, який займається пошуком от таких. Але є ще місця, які ну, от не дочистили. Дивіться. Іди, дивіться, дивіться, що дощі, да підходьте, що ви. Максимум, что я своими глазами видел и намеривал, это одна была разрыта э, частица 3800 микрозивер. То есть 3800, запятая что-то там. То есть уже 3 миллизиверта. Вот. А, вот, кстати, с той стороны будет больше. Yeah, so from the opposite side, you're gonna measure higher level. Uh, ну, можете снимать видео, подходите ближе. Ну, смотрите, uh, так, чтобы вы понимали и не жахали по того. So guys, now we are Поскольку идеальная, да, гендейская форма, вот, вот это мы, например, называем лестницом мира. Да, ну, в общем, тут для плоток просто такой огромный рейндж. Well, guys, so I want to show you first of all the cool view for the pictures, we call it stairs to the sky. Because of the perfect shape, because that's engineering, you can uh, actually use any spot and you're going to see the perfect tunnel. Ok, 
okay, people? So you Please. have 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, okay. To make a picture to explore this area by yourself. <laughs> so the range, maximum one, where you can go, that's the end of the first trader. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. чисто как раз после пожаров начали этим задумываться, задумываться и заниматься. Mm -hmm. То есть до этого это не выполнялось долгие годы, и у нас очень много было сухостой, который просто падал, лежал, ходит здесь и это... Straight from us is the channel which uh, we use to cool down, to pass the hot water to the cooling pond. At block number one, two, three, and four, they were using they were using a special huge technical lake which is called cooling pond. Um, in this lake, water made a circle and pulled down an afterward for the reactor. This water is the water of the second floor. I mean that the start of the reactor and in this cooling pond, Soviets were providing use of the fish farm. So huge, not because it is uh, radioactive, that's because you guys are, you're not even understand. The so, um, water here was always in a temperature of 36 degrees of Celsius. And when the station was in use, it had never been under the ice. I don't know, do you know but, or not, but Chernobyl nuclear power plant, after the accident, it continued to work and produce energy. How, uh, how much time? Until 2000, I think. Yeah, it was 2000. when accident happened, it was stopped. Block number three was stopped on the second day, on the 27th of April, they stopped it. In one week, they stopped blocks number one and two. But then Soviets count the loss, which they received because of that and said, okay guys, let's put it back in the motion. The politicians were even believing that in one month they're gonna put block number four back. October, in the end of the October of 1986, they put back reactors number one and two. And block number three was you see, Today, station is not in use anymore, as you said. Because, uh, Chernobyl nuclear power plant is the last nuclear power plant in Ukraine with the RBMK reactors. All other, they are working on VWR. So, first of all, for us it was uncomfortable. And of course, guys, your countries, European Union, uh, they were saying, next, that, look, they were saying that uh, we actually want you to stop it because first of all reactors are dangerous secondly you do not use nuclear weapons anymore because in 1994 uh, ukraine uh, signed the budapest memorandum so the document which said no nuclear weapons in ukraine that was the biggest mistake so under the yellow crane you can see the lines with the containers exactly over there we are seeing a few uh, do you know what you are doing? Very, very slow. But today, the research has for us for 100 years. It's fully Germanicized. And as you can see, it's made not from the lead. It's made from the lead. We have a fire that comes out. They think that it's a fire. The fire was told that it was very 
снижко и что самое интересное, работники еще сами не понимали, что происходит. В основном люди были не защищены. Окей, so now, now we gonna move to the lean platform. Over there, near the block number four, we're gonna have a limit of uh, direction for the pictures. Ну да, смотрите, мы сейчас с вами подъедем к четвертому номеру к блоку, к обзорной площадке. У нас там будет ограничение по фотографии. Вот. Лица называется Хаят номер один. Мы дальше вот другой Хаят. Это сходящий второго типа, который уже был знает, сколько стоит. И он уже, мабуть, ну, ага, плит. Но в час работы станция э, встигла не сбирать 20 тысяч твейлов. И теперь мы их перемещаем на другое сховище, воно є сховищем су. Так, народ, смотрите, значит, фотографировать ну, можно после только аски. А, при том, я вам советую так нормально поторожиться, потому что вот та электричка сейчас не будет. Когда мы ее забрали, с помощью электричной дамкачи мы можем вважать эту арку не больше, не больше, не больше, не больше. Сама арка все не просто груза металла, это не сухая вентиляция. Эта вентиляция, она разрублялась в Италии уже для подсоединения. Середу, по площади, можно спустить его на 32, в принципе, не стоять. Усі стрижні були також однією з таких основних основних недолі. Про них я трошки пізніше теж скажу. Вибухи знаходяться на сосі. На сос на сосі повинно бути вісім штук завжди. Шість в роботі, два знаходяться на резерві на випадок ремонту або аварії. Такі ж це називається барабан сепаратора. Коли вода розігрівається, нам потрібно якось відділити. Yeah, it's rising. Yeah. Because mine was up to maybe 19 last time, I think. Oh, 13, 13, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's going down now. Well, I'm sure I got 19 before. I was convinced that... Okay. Потім доробляли наші архітектори в Києві, 
i četvrtega lutoga 70. roku bil spokvarjeni perši perše perša cehla teda misla i hoću vam se skazati še prvi tudi bila osobu za infrastrukturo misto malo tri transportne razvijaske to je bilo avtobuse možno bilo sisti na pojez da reče tudi bila prema jelka Moskva Žetome Smajnecki možno bilo skoristati se vodnim transportom, švedki s nekateri rakete tam je to ure tudi bila velika zakladnja srednje znači ne znali še kaj deficit a zaraz mi bi reče z vami jedno pri ulici Lesi Jirs prvi projekt of the city was made in Moskov then it was a little bit changed in Kiev by our architects and on 1st of February 1970 they put first brick of this place. Honestly, Lipet is an amazing place. Um, it has got three ways of transport, three ways. So you can use a bus, you can use a uh, train. Actually here, Lipet used to stand in a very important train. Middle salary of Lipet was uh, almost twice, uh, twice times higher the middle salary of Kiev. So for example in Kiev that was 120 rubles, in Pripyat around 200. Так, народ, а зараз ми почнемо з вами з такого місця, яке воно просто не залишає, воно продовжене, тому що це стоянка ліквідаційної техніки. Sorry? Фон? Ты что? Телефон. Нет. Фон? Да. Это радиация? Нет, это радиация. А. Нет.
According to the main plan, there must be seven of them, but they built only five. Unfortunately, the city was can't structure, I think, quite fast. In four to six hours after the accident happened. But today, that's quite long. Uh, evacuation passed very peacefully without the panic, because for those people, all was organized in the way that it's looked like, um, you know, it's looked more like... Um, um, civilian protection learning, so people were evacuated as a training. And also, they were telling them that evacuation is temporary one. Probably you've heard about three days evacuation, but... In Hotel, yeah. Hotel where uh, Legato lived. Right. It's it. It is. It's true. Right. Yeah. Because look, uh, let's begin from the hot spot. That's the bright example of how radiation uh, get inside of the metal. Measure level. Twenty-two. Twenty-six. Here it goes to forty-seven. На этой крышке на данный момент находится с, по уровню 160 тысяч бета распадов при норме в 20. Here there are 160,000 particles with a normal degree of 20. 
That's why the level is so high. А вам прям надо? Горбачову доповіли про аварію тільки о 5-й годині ранку. Чому? Тому що тільки о 5-й годині було вже хоч трохи зрозуміло, що сталося. Він в той же момент, він сплетає, ми підходимо, він сплетає комісію, на цій якої став Борис Щербина. Він був головною людиною ліквідаційного протесту. Але ось тільки Щербина не научили. Баранов залишиться на вході для того, щоб чергувати на випадок того, якщо їм потрібна буде допомога. Рибачки. Ось кожному давали по два дозиметри. І він каже так. Лололол. Окей. Right, you just told you that Central Square of Pripyat is bigger than the Maiden in Kiev. And that's true. That's the size of the central square. Look, hotel police. Uh, that's how it used to look before the accident. Very nice and beautiful place. You were absolutely right because really in hotel police used to leave academician legacy. But how it was, how it happened? Uh, Gorbachev, the Soviet Union president, he was informed about the accident only at 5 a.m. In the head of the scientific commission used to be academician Legasov. He was uh, actually he was not a physicist. He was a, a more professionalized in chemistry. When he came here, they all were put to the hotel police. Actually, on the last floor, this bigger balcony, they had an absorbing platform uh, with the view on the reactor. That's this size, three kilometers. Oh. And they were controlling helicopters which were flying because all open areas of Pripyat Central Square an amusement park and the stadium where we're going to be today they all were in use as the landing fields for the helicopters that's why uh, that's quite contaminated place but of course levels are not so high because with the time with the rains or with all that stuff of course radiation and down down and down and of course keep it uh, city was passing this activation during the whole 90s a lot of people thinking that after the evacuation when let's say all Pripyat citizens were gathered and moved out, Pripyat became a dead city. Not true. Because government left around 5,000 people here in Pripyat to provide the control of uh, station and local facilities. So the main important people, they left here till the 5th of May. That was the day when Chernobyl city, which we're also going to visit, was evacuated and people were replaced because it's uh, quite far away, it's, that's about 14 kilometers from here and in the safe zone. But for the first several days, they used to live under the high radiation level, just over here in Hotel Police. To the Soviet, mostly they, they didn't like the Ukrainian language and Ukrainian culture. I mean, they always were telling to all republics that international language is Russian. But here we see Ukrainian letters, Ukrainian name, Polisha. That's the name of the region. A bit more straight. Which is completely...
Так, народ, я сижу уже танцует, это хорошо. Да, Да, готель, бачите? Про те, що, про що я вам казав. Очень. Особенно, когда бахли. Правильно, жили в Сайдике. Ми жили, проводили окремо, їли вони у всіх ресторанах. До речі, до Аварії ресторани були дуже популярні для... Панські багато речей відбирали, але я думаю, ці люди просто не розуміли, чому їх відбирають. Але розумієте, коли ви намагаєтеся вивести диван, який на себе вже досить так гарно натягнув, а вас не відпускають. Ну, як вам пояснити? Вічно вийдете було так. Після того, вже як пройшло 25 жовтня 86-го почався процес дезактивації. Що то було? Кожну квартиру обходили. Процес, до речі, тривав аж до 88-го року. Кожну квартиру обходили працівники поліції з дезиметристами. І всі речі, які можна було винести, вивезти, продати або використовувати на блага ліквідації, забирали. Все інше, то, що було забруднене, робили так. Судісно під'їжджає вам цей жіфт, а ви прямо в літа граєте по хатунку. Потім все це відвозили на місця, де була вже підготована земля для будівлі для будівництва мікрорайону на Маршівці 7 ось там вирили велетельські тепловаги і туди все збагали Тобто ваш радіоцій виходить за ним, чого розоборонено? Алло, але якщо ви напишете там інше слово на ринку Так і зробили, у нас є ПЗРО, пункти захоронення радіаційних відходів а є ПТЛРВ, пункт тимчасової локалізації радіоактивної сполонки. Радіоактивна сміття, просто відбувається в цьому сфері, ми всі питали, ми маємо його повинні сюди. На країні, що там буде виходити так, просто... Його критичні квартири на сьогоднішній день, ви бачите, не дуже важко. Приїжджаю з них, ми погнали, і все вирізалося з цього машини. Це є бекселері з театру. Це декорації, так. Це була бекселері з театру. And over there we have a bright example of metal scraping which passed through the 2000s. See, radiators, that's one of the rare things in Pripyat. So in case if you enter in the building, yeah, you won't find them inside, mostly. Because it was expensive metal. They were just cut. You see how it is lying, one and one. It was prepared. But something went wrong for them and they didn't take it. And uh, to be honest, even the liquidators themselves, they became to a state. Yeah, a lot of things. Thank you. 
Here, here are no fire, uh, fire uh, to kill. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, if you're ready, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Don't feed local insects. <laughs> okay. But they have never been officially in this bus. Before you're going to use any kind of mechanism, what you have to do. Так, до речі, до речі, такий цікавий факт про колесо. Воно було подарунком від держави до 1 травня. Я That's exactly the visible mutation on the tree. You see this birch, mm -hmm. and from this birch is going up another birch, and look um. how they all are growing. Because uh, from the biology, normal tree, first you will have to uh, make a cone like that, mm -hmm. if, but not grow up right from the roots in different ways, directions. Mm -hmm. So that's the mutation. <laughs> Нет, видите, были вот эти три пятнашки. Мир у мир, салка ПСС. Да. Линия военная. Да, все выпалы. Я уже ушел, да? How do you think where we are now? Uh, Can't quite tell. No. <laughs> <laughs> the stadium, it's not like when like it's not yeah, like around yeah. Wembley Stadium, it's not the normal yeah, but that's situation when you go to, yeah. yeah, that's the running track and that's oh, the football field. Oh. Really? We're gonna pass through the football this field. This is the stadium. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. no, no, now we're already with you the Thank 
What stage in there it was? It's uh, running track. Uh, uh, running stadium. Football, right? Ah, uh, Varota was a brawl at Sudova. Ah, football is over there. Yeah, 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 the football pitch here, and this was just running track. In Soviet Union, there are no this rubber cover. Yeah, yeah. I, I, just uh, hardcore, just asshole. On your yeah. head. Well, yeah. Okay. On your head. Yeah, Those lights up there was where the for the stadium is. Yes, yes. Another one is lying down because it's fall. Okay. This was also almost. You see the the asphalt in the air. It's broken. Mm -hmm. Right now, so some people uh, leaving from uh, Pripyat. A work to send. Today? Yeah. No. Only in Chernobyl. Ah, the Chernobyl. The, yeah, sorry. Yeah, today, yeah, but uh, they are leaving just during the trip. Yes, so I understand. So they stay in the work and use. But officially, Chernobyl, yeah. uh, on the map, it's not a town. It's just yes. administrative part of Chernobyl zone. Okay. So, now we are here with you. Пересекли вулицю, яка називається гідропроєкт. Братан стадіон. Ми з вами потрапляємо до мікрорайону номер 5. Найновіше на той час. That way run away because of the tree. Oh yeah. Well, I can climb, but oh. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will not here, uh, try this today. <laughs> you can uh, move up local insects. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, really, they are hiding under the leaves. And when you are just passing and do, for example, like that, they are moving out. So they are like disturbing them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they are trying to eat you. So now, guys, maybe you won't believe me, but we are on the territory of the kindergarten of Pripyat. 
Сейчас мы с вами уже заходим на территорию детского сада города Припяти. Детский сад номер 15, кстати, здесь вот что классно. Даже через окна можно рассмотреть такой местный, остатки местного интерьера. Вот мы сейчас заходим со стороны детской площадки. Вот там вот рисунки мультяшные всякие. Там находится лодка песочница, через которую дерево уже прорастает. И все это в самом новом микрорайоне города. Сам по себе детский сад имел свое название. Вот, кстати, в Припяти тоже было, что интересно, каждый детский сад отличался своим названием. Вот этот назывался Чебурашка. So, every kindergarten in Припять had name, except of the number. This one was called Чебурашка, that's the cartoon hero. And um, now we're gonna pass through the playground, where you can see a lot of uh, cartoon paintings are still left. And what is really cool here that even through the windows you can perfectly see all these toys and stuff which left after the accident. Okay, carefully. Так, ну разбейте, идем на ту сторону, пока что там э, больше я на что дивитися, а по-друге, э, дивитесь. Что очень важно, я вас очень хочу попросить, дивіться теж под ноги, потому что можно подскользнуться, поехать на местной земле, не будьте обережны. Если не закончу, я могу поднимать на эту сторону, мы сейчас это будем идти, да,
Nie maszynka, z sodną dartką. O, maszynka. Так как показывает практика, как потерялся, так и найдет. Любой человек. Ну да. Пьяный поляк. О, поляк я вообще хотел. Можно по крикам курума. Yeah. Okay. Guys, now we have only crossed micro district number five and came just to the border with the micro district number four on the right. Дрэши вольца называлась Героя Сталинграда. Я тащил на So guys, you saw all the wires on the entrance to the city, but why they are inside? All is very simple. I told you that city didn't become dead after the accident. It used to be the city for the workers. You saw the facility complex. So uh, by these wires, they were trying to divide clean parts of the city, like the streets with the asphalt, from the contaminated parts on the opposite side of the wire. Знаешь, как она Это 
набережна. Ось, ну я можу, я так думаю, ви вже може здогадалися, але ми зараз вийдемо до місця, яке колись було із колом вокзалом. Одне з найкрасивіших. А. You are just a risky guy. Why? If I want you to the end of the trip, probably it's gonna be radiation that you ate all of that prefect cafeteria. We are now moving to the river. Look guys, that's how this place used to look before the accident. Пам'ятаєте, я вам казав про кущі з розами. Ось вам яскравий приклад того, як воно виглядало. Remember, I've told you that prepaid citizens had a tradition for each citizen one bush of roses. Сильно краще, ніж з цієї. Там і вітражі цікавіші. Було кафе. Ми зараз виходимо на залу очікування. Він... Hey guys, I want to show you one more picture, interesting thing, it's probably going to impress you. This is our maybe the third great beautiful city of Minsk, which is... Look at this, this is a photo, which is made from our own place. We are 78% of Minsk, so this is the mountain. This photo was made right Плоды вандалы взяли все в стекло побили. Ота грудна вода з міста, вона якраз цікала сходами і 
працював капілярний ефект, ну, тобто через посуху. Вот то, что находится сейчас перед вами, видите, насколько ровно ландшафт. Вот это как раз было место, где третий пустынник и не микрорайон. Вот это не видно, просто абсолютно лучше. Вот это не видно, просто абсолютно лучше. Вот это не видно, просто абсолютно лучше. Вот how you feel those ships which uh, were moving here high speed ships 60 kilometers per hour above the water so this one was a part of the Pita River we call it Yana Park but today that got delayed because I told you the water with the distillation shampoo was just coming down right here as a result water is now not going to the bottom of the river I know, I think during the liquidation because it was useless and this river port was used to can swim here when the river you think it's, you think it's uh, if think it's gonna trap inside of you the water exactly it can cause the problems okay Uh, if I four, four, five, four, four, four years, four, four years. Okay. Ah, uh, тут колес. А ну зажди зараз. Is popular in Ukraine. Ah, uh, yeah, because we have a lot of jokes about him. <laughs> Місце, щоб запрошувати на побачення. Колись казав мій колега, який був жителем Припяті. Тут ми створювали наші сім'ї. Колись дівчину можна було підкорити заморозити. Recreating our family. It was very popular to take girl here and order a local ice cream. Смотрите, пока там все идут, вон там как раз дырочка в стекле, мадам. А вот тут, до речи, через иконочку, дуже гарно видно. Это еще... Вони не зроблені за прямою технологією, тобто тут не просто так вирізаний тупо кусок скла, вони а, вирізали пластину і викладали малюнок не лицевою стороною, а ребром. І ось сам а, з кута можна залізти і з тієї сторони подивитися, як воно зроблено. На сьогоднішній день вручну цю технологію відтворити ну, дуже важко. In a very interesting technology. They didn't take uh, like a the plastics and put them not by the front side but by the corner like that. And but they way, yes, yeah. They made a picture. Mm -hmm. И ребром выставляли малюнок. Now you are radioactive. Uh, not as much as you. No. <laughs> well, I already smoke in prepaid. Eat in prepaid. 
<laughs> I eat two uh, sticks. Twice. Uh, you eat twice. Yeah. Not two, you eat four or five there and two here. <laughs> crazy man. <laughs> you are also crazy Estonish people? Of course. We're always crazy. <laughs> Look, the dog is there. <laughs> I think they have a good life in here. Yeah, more than. Take your place. Already take your place. Мы сейчас с вами подошли к зданию медико-санитарной части номер 126. Название такое военизированное, но по правде говоря, это просто огромный медкомплекс, который в своем составе там же точно. И на той стороне, на улице энтузиастов. Вот. Пострадавших проводили, привозили именно сюда. Но при... Жоговое отделение, у всех были одни и те же симптомы. Это тошнота, очень сильная рвота, головокружение, слабость. Набор, который в основном сопутствует нам, были пищевые направления. Но это не Они не знают, с чем они имеют дело, но это отличные пищевые. Почему у нас это не First victims were put here in several hours because the symptoms of the radiation sickness, you won't see them just in one moment. You need to time to infect you. All these people were placed in the floor number three. Actually, that was the uh, part which was uh, experienced from the different types of burnings. All these people had the same symptoms throating out, diarrhea, terrible weakness and headache. So the people who were just lying on the bed, they were not able to stand up. All these were symptoms of radiation sickness. This moment, nurses, by their own hands, were taking off the clothes of the firefighters, which was highly contaminated, and put it to the basement. It's still here, yeah, yeah, yeah. inside. When the doctors understood the line of symptoms, they immediately collect all that information and send it to the Moscow. At the evening of 26th of April in Moscow, we prepared operation of transportation. So they said, prepare here these guys, put them to the cars, and on 27th of April, take them to the Kiev airport in Moscow. From there, straight plane to the Moscow. Just imagine 15 Soviet republics and only one clinic, Moscow Hospital number six, was able to help those people. But mostly it was too late because those guys grabbed three or even four times higher dose of radiation than lethal for the human. Unfortunately, they were alive corpses. When they came to the hospital, they came in the time of latency period. Remember the second chapter of H.B.O. with Mila Ignatienko show on the door of the uh, room in the hospital and her husband used to play cards. Yeah. Like a uh, full of strands, yeah. healthy guy. There's the, um, this uh, period when your body is lying to yourself. Because he's thinking that all these isotopes, for example, cesium-137, strontium-90, uh, for our body, it's calcium and calcium, and it's thinking that it's using it. While it is doing that, you are feeling yourself good. But when they are given a fact, because, for example, strontium 90, uh, it gathering inside of your bones and killing the bone marrow. 
that means that uh, production of the erythrocytes, red blood cells, uh, moving down. What are what are doing erythrocytes? Tell me, please. Are they in lympha now? Huh? The lympha? Nope. No. Try again. School I of biology. Huh? I don't know. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know. I'm not good same. at biology. <laughs> okay. No ideas. No. Oxygen. Transport of the oxygen. Ah, uh, red. Uh, uh, red, uh, red blood cells. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Ah, of course, yeah. I don't know, of course. <laughs> <laughs> the, the body is just um, dying while human is still alive. It's just a life course. The, those people who you saw in the film, how they used to look, it's true, because it was drawn, drawn just from their photos. Mm. Unfortunately, the only way to help those people were painkillers. But Soviet medics uh, uh, asked the help of the US doctor, Robert Gale. He came to the hospital and together they made 13 operations. From these 13, were, only two were successful. All other people later died. It was too late. So the bone marrow transplantation didn't help them because it was prepared too quick. You need to find the donor very, very strictly. And also, the dose was too high. So there are no way to survive, unfortunately. Vasily Ignatienko, this guy, he also passed through the transplantation, but it didn't help him. Mm, his wife, this is actually a true story. Uh, because she visited him every day and mm -hmm. passed near his bed around six, seven hours every day. Mm -hmm. So when she got pregnant before the accident, actually she just... Uh, the same as you go with your baby for the x-ray, every day, the same, absolutely the same. A daughter born with the cirrhosis of liver, no chance to survive, she died in four hours. Now she has a son, but he have a list of problems with the health, but not so... Uh, you know, um, so major, like most people have from Chernobyl. All those people, the government didn't let relatives to transport their bodies to the motherland and bury them here. What they done? Everybody was covered with the polyethylene, then put in the wood box, then one more time polyethylene, then in the zinc box. And all this column with the um, military supplies came to the Mitishinsky graveyard, that's in Moscow, the cemetery. Where they uh, made the grave, uh, we in the standard we have a grave at about two meters deep. They made four meters. They put the boxes into the grave and filled up with the concrete. Okay. Yes, that was the only way how they thought. Because I probably I'm sure that if you're gonna take some soil for the analysis, and of course if you if uh, FSB won't catch you, you will find a lot of radionuclides there. But mm, we'll never know, probably. So all those guys, uh, they died in three weeks mostly. But there are three of them who are buried outside of Moscow. One of them under the reactor. Uh, his colleague who was found with a broken spine here on the territory of Chernobyl zone. And the third person was uh, with the surname Lilichenko. This guy actually made um, impossible. He went to the place where radiation level was 2,000 rongens per hour, twice, to stop the oxygen passing to the turbine, so to prevent the explosion after the destruction. Yeah, and he knew what he was doing, but he decided to give his life and helped his colleagues. And he died in his motherland in one of the Ukrainian states near the Kyiv as a result. That's how it happened. Officially, we have 31 victims of the accident. But in this Soviet statistics were included only those who were on the reactor that night, who absorbed the dose of radiation and died because of the radiation sickness. That's the difference. Why they didn't include those who died later? Because mostly people were dying because of the after effects, like uh, problems with the heart, problems with the lung and cancer. other things. Yeah, cancer. Yeah, thank you. So that's the list. Unfortunately, um, but what is the real number? What they nobody knows. Thousands. Nobody counts. Thousands. Uh, in Chernobyl Museum in Kiev, if you're gonna have a time, visit it. They have also English speaking guide. So they had the document from the KGB. Uh, statistics says that in first two weeks there were found ten thousand people who had the symptoms of the radiation sickness. And that's the minimum. All right, let's go in. Let's stop feeling inside. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
форме. Here's the street of Chernobyl. On the right, you can see local school. Now it is hospital. Вот справа проезжаємо колись школу Чорнобильську на сьогоднішній день, то є медсанчастина. Ось, яка ніколи вам в житті не допоможе, бо в них навіть бентів нема. Але все ж таки воно існує. А ось зараз зліва ви побачите якраз таки частинку старого-старого Чорнобиля. Ось ті сільські будиночки. До речі, деякі з них досі використовуються місцем. Ось так, і на левій зараз ви бачите Real Chernobyl. This town used to look as a huge, huge village. Also, Chernobyl, uh, why it was called Chernobyl? Because Chernobyl town was the biggest administrative center during the time of 70s, while Pripyat was building. And used to live here around 14,000 people before the accident happened. These guys, till the day of evacuation, till the 5th of May, they were helping in liquidation. They were filling up the bags with the sand. Так, ну і, звісно, тут знаходиться вся інфраструктура в плані готелів, якщо люди сюди приїздять на декілька днів. До речі, про чистоту дуже гарно підмітили, тому що тут е дуже чисто як і повітря, так і самі вулиці. Мало людей, майже не смітять, якщо ми не рахуємо працівників алкашів. Ось, а от зараз зліва з'явиться найдовша будівля міста, стоквартирник так званий, ось він зліва. Look guys, on the left has the longest house of the Chernobyl town. We call it this 100 flat house. Ну і зараз ми з вами зробимо таку цікавеньку символічну зупиночку біля стелки. Я вам рекомендую пришвидшитись, бо зараз воно вийде. We can do good pictures of the welcome city sign. So run there first of all and then come back here to the police post. Thank you. 
English? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Uh, uh, I saw those uh, socks there. Uh, what size do you need? Uh, Big or small? Uh, are those uh, for men, women, yes, or, or, women or, or everybody? 36, uh, 38, and okay. um, 42, 43. Okay, but do you have uh, 37 maybe? No, I'm sorry. 47, 37. Uh, 37. So, yes. Yeah. 125. Yes, and then I will... I will take that magnet. Yes. With a green color. This one? Yes, that's the right thing. 185. 185. Okay, I'll take one. This wristband too. <laughs> and then, th that's all. <laughs> 240. Mm -hmm. 100, 200, and what was the number? M14. 14. 14, yes. Uh, that should do it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, right, I don't know. 